Last year when you guys beat the Huskies in Seattle, it seemed like there was quite a, a spillover effect in terms of crowd size and, and the students starting to come out to these games. Did that kind of show you what, what sort of impact this game has in this rivalry? Can't have? I, I think, I don't know if last year the students came just because of that. I think it was more of, I believe that was our, maybe our second or third win. I thought having beat Cal on the road, uh, playing Stanford tough, and winning that game, I think it was more of people could feel the momentum of the program. I don't think it was just that game because we had played some pretty good basketball in some games pr prior to that. But certainly, uh, that was an impact on all that as well. They have a few freshmen from the Seattle area. You, you guys recruit the South Puget Sound. Does, does this game have an outsized importance when there's two in-state programs trying to recruit the same area like that? Um, yes and no. I, I think you have people that are, are growing up uh, wanting to go and play at UW, and Lorenzo has done uh, an outstanding job in his time being there of really recruiting the state of Washington, in particular Seattle and Tacoma area, and, and I understand that. Uh, for our program, we feel like we have an outstanding institution over here, a wonderful community. It's an incredible college environment over here. Uh, the thing we need to do is build our program and get it back to the days when, when Raveling was here, Calvin Sampson, uh, the Bennetts were here, and all that energy was in the building. Because if you do that, uh, whether there are recruits over in Seattle, Tacoma, that side of the, the mountain over there wanting to come to school here, uh, there's going to be plenty of recruits in the Northwest. But at the same time, we're a program we feel like we can go nationwide with what we have to offer here. And with all the basketball players in this country, I would always like to recruit the Northwest first and give everybody that opportunity. If we can get that level of player to help us win Pac-12 championship, that would be wonderful. But there are players that, that would crawl to get here to Washington State with all we have to have here to offer. All they have to do is see it. We've had it out of every recruit we've brought in here. They've all said the same thing. We did not realize you had all of that there in Pullman. So it's about visibility to me right now. Do you think as you bring in guys like Deontay and Robo that the game becomes more important to your team? The game is important anyhow. It, it is just because of the, the history of the two schools, the rivalry. There's so many Cougs all up throughout this country and over in Seattle area, and there's so many Huskies everywhere. So the game's already important. So it doesn't become any more important than what the media wants to make it because, again, these guys have played AAU ball together. Some of them are friends. The rivalry is the fans, and the fans, that rivalry has been for 30, 40, 50 years in some instances. But for us and the coaches and everything, uh, it's about this time of year. You want to win games, and the fact that this is a rival game, it's important. But what's just as important to us, protect our home court, play well, gain momentum before we go out on the road, uh, understand some things, get better, play smarter, be, be more assertive in what you want to do. Those things continue to need to be important to me right now as well, too. Talked about trying to keep everybody focused, and it's hard, or not necessarily hard, but the guys playing against guys that they've played this t with teammates. When you come off of a win against a team like UCLA, it was ranked at least in one poll, is it hard to keep them focused on the next game, or because it's the Apple Cup for basketball, does it make it any easier? No, and again, you would probably talk to some of these guys. They're, they're just now starting to understand about the Apple Cup. Again, the new players in the program. Uh, Washington's coming off of two wins. They beat UCLA and beat USC, being down 22 and came back and beat them. So we, we both got, we have that to deal with. But you got a week to prepare. And this is about getting better. Uh, Lorenzo needs to get his team better. I want to get my team better. So what happened last week is a non-factor in what's coming up on this Saturday. Because this Saturday, uh, we're at home again. We go on the road next week. There's some things we need to do better than what we did last week, even in the UCLA game. There's some things we need to do better, and that's what we're focusing on, getting better in those areas and the fact that you have your rival school coming into play as well, too. Now that you're 14 games into the season, is there anybody that's kind of stood out to you or that surprised you that maybe you, you knew what they were capable of, but now that they're being able to show it, that they've stood out? Uh, that kind of comes and goes with every practice, every game. Uh, Charles Callison, his, his poise, uh, his ability to score, his, his strength, that stands out to me. Darian King, not that he's healthy. 
his, his skill levels, ability to shoot it, put it on the floor and do those things. Josh Hawkinson just continues to amaze me. His ninth double-double now, and I think it's like his 43rd, 45th one out of, out of the last 50-something game. It's just an incredible number to me. And Connor Clifford, who's just an automatic low post scorer in there. So there's the guys show me different things at different times that I'm real pleased with. Uh, but probably the biggest thing that I'm pleased with is just how hard they continue to work for us and how they allow us to make adjustments. At the, the SC game, we did not play well. We made adjustments, they came back, and we got some things figured out, and they responded within a 48-hour window. They're almost two different teams. Well, now I want consistency. You should look like that every weekend to me. Andrew Andrews is one of the players that gets to the free throw line the most of anybody in the country. How is he able to do that, and how can you guys adjust? He's, he's a smart basketball player. He's a physical basketball player. He's a tremendous athlete. He understands the game. Uh, how do you adjust? Don't follow him <laughs> because he, he gets there a lot because people follow him a lot. You can't follow him. And he, he, has a, he reminds me of um, uh, Devontae Lacey, who had a knack for just drawing fouls, and he's very good at that. Is that something you'd like your team to work on? I understand you guys get zoned a lot, but it, you, you do have a pretty low free throw rate. Our low free throw rate is because we're a good shooting team. We shoot the ball well, so therefore you're not getting fouled like you're knocking down shots, number one. And number two, quite frankly, I think Connor Clifford, Valentine, I think those guys have taken a pounding inside. I go back and look at tape, I see a lot of fouls that should be called, but there's nothing I can do about it. We were talking after the last game about how Bernard Suggs kind of turned the corner a little bit after the break. Um, what was the key in him improving and was it kind of difficult because he experienced a lot of success in those exhibition games, and then when the real game started, kind of was an adjustment period? I don't think he's, he experienced a lot of success in the exhibition games. There's only two of them, so it's not like he had ten of them. So uh, everybody could look good in an exhibition game. I think with Renard, as was the case with, with Charles and, and Darian too, it's a big adjustment from high school to this level, it's a big adjustment from junior college to this level. Uh, new academics, new offense, new defense, new plays. There's so much more you have to learn and do and be accountable for that you may not have to be accountable for at those other levels. And I think once you can get through that first semester of classes and school and get that behind you, you tend to relax and settle in. And that's why you see those guys starting to play better now. Uh, they've been taught so much stuff thrown at them that they've had to absorb. Some of it they've picked up on, some of it they didn't. But they're starting to come now because they've been a little bit one-dimensional these last few weeks with just basketball now. Having done a terrific job academically, they can move into basketball, even though school's getting ready to start again here. It's been kind of nice having those guys come now and get on their games and get more confident. And this question might ruffle some feathers, but uh -oh. how, does, how does this rivalry compare to when you were the Oregon coach and the OSU Oregon Um, I think they're, they're similar in regards to Oregon and Oregon State are institutions that have been around close to 100 years. Washington and Washington State is the same. The rivalry has been there forever. Uh, when I talk about these programs, the, the known factors in all these programs is the school and the rivalry. What changes are the presidents, the athletic directors, the coaches, the players, the media personnel changes, but the history and the tradition and the institutions, they all stay. And that's the scenario in both of those situations, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State. The characters have changed, but the tradition, the history, the rivalries have stayed there. When you've watched, uh, How about that for an answer? That's a good answer, wasn't it? When you watch the tape of the Huskies this year, what have you seen? I've seen youth at times. I've seen great leadership in Andrews, who leads that youth. I've seen some outstanding coaching as they've come back on two really good premier programs in this conference. I've seen athleticism. Uh, I've seen guys with an ability to put it on the floor and get to the basket. Uh, guys that can shoot threes and guys that rebound the ball like crazy. So uh, all of those things thrown in, uh, Lorenzo's done a very, very good job with that team uh, for the, having that many young freshmen having to coach. As a coach, how difficult would it be not, not only to get all those freshmen on the same page, but to get all those egos, a lot of highly recruited guys, all, all buying into a system that quickly? That's probably the bigger challenge than anything else. And, and that's what I mean. He's done a good job of that because, you know, I see a team that plays really well together. Any questions from the phone? Hey, Coach, it's Steph Lowe. Um, I'm working on something on Josh Hawkinson. You referenced him a little bit. 
when you first got to Washington State, what did you see in him that made you think, hey, this guy is better suited for that stretch four role than really as a center, which is what he was doing before? I actually saw him uh, when I was over doing a few of the TV broadcast games and, and watching shoot-arounds and watching practice, and I saw a guy that wasn't used much, but I saw his skill set, as you just keep your eye. He was the guy that stuck out to me because I saw him knocking down threes. He uh, had, had this gangly body with a jump hook that was automatic. Uh, he had a pretty good feel. I saw some toughness in him. And he started to remind me of the four men, that European stretch four man that I've had a chance to coach while at Oregon, even at St. Mary's. That's the most difficult position to find in the system we play is the four and then the point guards, the second one, because that four man has to be able to do a number of things. Rebound, score inside, stretch the floor and shoot the three, and really think the game, because he's put in a position to handle the ball a lot. And all of the foremen that I have, going back to my St. Mary's days, A.J. Rollins, six seven runner, athlete. Uh, A.D. Smith at Oregon, skilled, smart, wasn't very athletic, almost at the conference in three-point shooting. Brian Bracey, six seven athlete, could really score. Marty Lunen, 6'9", 6'10", rebound like a madman, stretch the floor, smart. Wow, there's Josh Hawkins, and he fit the exact same mold only when you, when you duplicate the mold, you try to find a little bit better. And we found a little bit better in Josh Hawkinson, but he fits it perfectly as to how we would play. So in doing the games, I always thought, boy, there's a guy that's being used wrong. There's a guy that's perfect to be able to stretch the floor and shoot threes and do some things. And as things worked out, he's happy that I'm here, and I'm happy that he's still here. So last year was sort of a breakout year for him. What did you kind of have him work on in the offseason? The biggest thing we had him work on was his strength and conditioning, which allowed him to be more consistent with this three-point shot. And he shot the ball well in the early part of last year, and as the season wore on playing so many minutes, his shot started getting flatter and shorter, and he didn't shoot the three ball as well. Whereas this year you see him shooting the three. He doesn't shoot a lot of them, but he shoots it well. That's because during the offseason – we got his body bigger and stronger and got his conditioning better. Therefore, he's able to sustain longer at a higher productivity rate, which has made him more effective or just as effective as he was last year. Thanks, Coach. And how about, like, you know, just the leadership factor there? He's one of the veterans now on a team that has a lot of new faces. How has he contributed in that regard? Well, we sent um, Josh and Ike and Junior all went to an Athletes in Action leadership camp this summer. And it was all about uh, taking control of your own destiny, uh, being a better leader on a team, how you do that. How you do it from a, a leadership, but yet being very humble. And he's one of the more humbled individuals I've ever been around to have the kind of accolades and stats and numbers that he puts up. And therefore, he's a tremendous leader on this team because he is, his humility allows him to be a tremendous leader because the guys want to play for him, around him, and they're happy for his success.